Ensemble methods take multiple models, which we'll call weak learners, and combine them together to form a more powerful model overall. Ensemble models are often at the top of the leaderboard for data science competitions, such as those found on Kaggle. There are several different ensembling techniques, and today we'll talk about bagging, boosting, and stacking. Bagging, or bootstrap aggregating, combines homogeneous weak learners. When I say homogeneous, what I mean here is that the weak learners are all the same type of model. For example, perhaps they're all decision trees. With bagging, we train each of the weak learners independently, which means we can parallelize the model training across multiple cores or computers very easily. To obtain predictions on unseen data, we then aggregate the predictions from each of the weak learners and perform some type of averaging. So why is it called bootstrap aggregating? Well, after we've split our data into a training set and a test set, we create B different bootstrap samples and train a weak learner on each of these B bootstrap samples and train a weak learner on each one. To make predictions using the bagged model, we pass an observation through each of the B weak learners and then we aggregate the predictions. If it's classification, this usually takes the form of a vote. If we have a continuous response variable, this is typically performed as averaging. So what's the difference between bagging decision trees and a random forest? A random forest is a bagging algorithm, but there's one main difference between bagging decision trees in general and the random forest algorithm. With a random forest, we not only use a different subset of observations to train each of the individual decision trees, but we also take a different subset of the variables to train each of the individual decision trees. Boosting is an ensembling method that trains models sequentially or iteratively. Therefore, the weak learners are not independent. The training of the model at the current step depends on previous models. One example of a boosting algorithm is Adaboost or Adaptive Boost. For binary classification, the Adaboost algorithm works in the following way. Each model in the sequence is trained where higher importance is given to the observations that were most difficult to predict in the previous step. Specifically, the weights of the previously misclassified observations are increased. At the end, in order to form the final strong learner from the weak learners, a weighted sum of the weak learners is taken. The weights for each of the weak learners is dependent on the performance of the weak learner. The weights for each of the weak learners is dependent on the performance of the weak learner. In other words, the better the weak learner performed, the higher its weight will be. Another example of a boosting algorithm is gradient boosting. With gradient boosting, the final model is also a weighted sum of the weak learners. However, gradient descent is used to determine how to improve at each step in the sequence. Gradient boosting is a generalization of boosting, where optimization can be based on any arbitrary differentiable loss function. Gradient boosting is often used for decision trees, and gradient boosted trees often outperform random forests. Stacking is an ensembling method that combines heterogeneous weak learners. For example, you might combine neural networks with decision trees, with GLMs, and so on. It's also important to note that it's common to have bagged and boosted models as weak learners in a stacked ensemble. For this reason, stacked models can be very, very difficult to interpret meaningfully. With that being said, they are usually top performing models. So if ensemble methods are not interpretable, why might we want to use them? Well, often our priority is not interpretability. There are situations where we want to have the model with the highest possible accuracy. In these cases, ensemble methods are highly desirable.